Good morning, everybody. Rody with Groovy Cycle Works here. I really appreciate a lot of the requests I've had to make more videos. I gotta admit that time's been tight, but I uh, wanted to throw something together for you today. We're gonna make some titanium handlebars. Uh, specifically, we're gonna make some of our Groovy Diggit bars. Uh, this is a two inch riser bar that's designed to clamp in a 31.8 stem. Um, width can vary depending on the individual needs. But typically, these have a little less of a back sweep than what my love handles do. I'm going to set these up about 17 degrees or so, simply because as the bar raises up, the need for rotation within the palm of your hand changes as well. So, titanium digit handlebars. Let's go get some. We're going to start off by selecting some of the titanium used for our bars. We're going to be using two different diameters, 31.8 for our center section, and 0.875 for our risers and our top portion of the bar. Here we're cutting the center section up, putting a 30 degree cut on either end. Should give us a nice clean aesthetic once we get it all put together. There's our center piece and we're going to take it on over to the belt sander and clean up our edges. That way we have a nice even area to do our fusion weld on. You see the white sparks there, those are indicative of titanium. Makes it kind of fun, kind of like fireworks going off. Next, we're going to move on and drill some holes in the top portion of our centerpiece. When welding titanium, it's really important to have airflow between our pieces so we can purge all of our oxygen out and make sure that we get argon completely on the inside and outside of the weld. So that's what those holes are for. I've taken some short stock for our riser section and now we're going to get it in here in the mill and put a 30 degree miter on that as well so it mates up with our center section. It's going to look really nice in that our end cut for our center clamp section and the degree angle for our riser bar will be the same. Here we're just manually feeding it down nice and slow and steady letting the whole fall do the work. Because this is 035 titanium, it is really easy to bind and tear, so we want to make sure that we go slow, even, and that we don't let any of those teeth catch. That's a terrible mess when you have the wall tear out on you like that. Really frustrating as well. So, with our cut complete, we'll go ahead and pull it on out of here, and we're going to clean it up, both on the outside diameter and the inside as well, making it look nice and tidy. Next thing we'll do then is throw it into the cold saw, and we're going to cut this piece in half. This will give us our two riser pieces. So here you can see we have some pieces all prepped up and ready to go. Next step, let's grab some flat sheet titanium. This is 6.4 TI. Uh, I basically took the center section, traced around it to make a template, and we're transferring that template onto our flat plate. I'll then cut all that out. Um, typically by hand to make these nice little end caps and you can see how these then fit right over top of our center section. That'll give us some good torsional rigidity. Everything then gets washed up in soapy water, scrubbed on the outside and inside before it gets rinsed and then it goes into one of the most important steps which is our ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, this cleaner is filled with a titanium specific um, solution so that it cleans off all the base metal inside and out, and getting rid of any of the fingerprints, dirt, oils, etc. that we pick up from the fabrication process. Everything will go here uh, into this heated bath for about uh, 12 to 15 minutes, letting the ultrasonic waves and bubbles do their thing. You can see that it gets started and it's kind of loud, so we're going to shut the door on this and come back when the time has expired, stick them in a rinse and we're going to have some bright, clean, shiny parts. Very important from this point forward that once it's been through our ultrasonic bath, we no longer touch it with bare hands. Gloved hands only. Uh, we don't want any of that hydrogen from our skin oils going onto the part and contaminating our welds. After our rinse, I get blown off with dry compressed air and then into the bake box for about 20 minutes. We'll watch the clock tick on down here. And then they come out. We got them at the weld table and we're ready to get going. Uh, 
couple more steps though before we can actually start fusing these together. We have a dedicated titanium uh, stainless steel wire brush that all the parts go through then. All the edges get hit with this titanium brush to make sure it's all cleaned up and the final bit of oxidation is gone. Once all those parts have been through that process, then they're going to go right into an acetone bath. Final little cleansing here to make sure that they're nice and tidy and that we have the greatest probability of not having any issue at all with our welding. Once we get them all clean, we're going to get the oxygen cleaned out and purged out of the inside. And then our torch has argon flowing around the outside of our electrode. So we're going to turn that on right now. And that should give us an oxygen-free environment that will allow us to crisply, cleanly weld our titanium. What we're looking for is a color-free weld. It should be shiny with no hue of blue, purple, or anything like that around the periphery. So here we are, we're just tacking the end caps on. This is one of the more difficult aspects in that it's tough to get a good purge, so you have to go slow, make sure you got everything tight and ready to go. And you can see we have our nice silver little end there. Now we're going to purge the inside of our piece before we weld all the way around it. So that blue line you see is carrying argon into the interior of the piece. And we'll zip through this right now, getting that all welded on for you. And once we're done welding, we'll pull this thing out here and show you the final product. <clears throat> Try to do a lot here with just fusion on this first pass, and then I go through a second pass and add a little bit of filler metal just to make sure that we have a nice even flow around the end of that bead. We don't want any areas where the heat has taken material away from the base metal because we don't want to undercut that material and cause strength issues. So once we've got a nice even bead on there, now we're going to start putting the risers on. Um, just a little tiny fixture plate that I made there to make sure that we keep them in phase or equal to each other. And we're going to start welding around there. We'll get these riser pieces all put on. Uh, this is a double pass weld, meaning that I go around first and fuse the material in place so that we really ensure that the root of that weld is well seated and complete and then go back through with a filler pass. After that, it gets fixtured up right into the next mill and we have a long hole saw arbor that's going to come down and it cuts both of these joints at the same time, ensuring that they're perfectly the same level and in phase. A uh, big shout out to Mark at Paragon Machine Works for making these extra long arbors for me. Uh, ironically, this is a bar that's going on to his bike that Drew at Engine Cycles is making for the Philly Bike Expo this year. So one of Mark's tools gets to help make a piece that's going to go onto the bike that he'll be riding. So pretty excited about that. You can see there that our cut is complete. We'll clean up the edges inside and out, and that's what we've got. Next up, hey, let's do the top of the bar. We finally get to the stuff that you get to use. So we're gonna cut this piece and get it all laid out here. Before we can get it welded on, we need to bend it up. And we're looking for about a 17 degree uh, bend for a handlebar area. And you can see we have a template here that I use. Uh, this is a piece of 0.875 that's been in the bender, and I have it all marked out for the distances from my datum points to the apex of the bend and how far I can expect it to bend for steel and for titanium. About a three degree difference based on the spring back. So we got our bar all bent up, and as we look at the bar here, you can see where the bar handle grip ends, where our datum point was, where our apex of a bend is, where the risers intersect, and the center. All these markings are really important to help us lay this out so that we have a good, clean, consistent product. The bar then is also going to get some holes drilled in it to allow for some argon flow. These holes sit in the center of the riser section. And here we have it fixtured up on the table. You can see our argon tube coming in from the end. Everything is fixtured up, held tight and level. And we're going to start uh, tacking this thing and welding it in place. 
And through the magic of video, here we are. We got the finished product, a Groovy Diggit riser bar, two inch in titanium. Thanks for watching. So there we go, folks. A Groovy Diggit bar made out of titanium from start to finish. Hope you enjoyed seeing the process. Uh, I appreciate the comments and the emails that I've been getting from folks asking for more videos. It uh, really means a lot that you enjoy the small niche of custom bicycle fabrication that I get to be part of. If you'd like it, you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button. Like, hit it hard. And I'll see if I can't get some more videos out for you. Uh, thanks especially to the encouragement from Sherlock and Scott. Uh, who says that he stays up at night once the family's asleep watching these videos. You poor soul. Till next time, y'all be good.